you yourself in the rep because it seems that I'm an actor as well, the idea of getting your script and then within a week you have it blocked, staged, and that night you're performing a different show. Did you yourself have a particular routine to deal with the stress or the anxieties or good, was there any? Good point. Good point. <laughs> um, the, the one or two things there. Um, first of all, um, and I'm just why, why I hesitate is just to think what, what I should come in with first. Let us just say something, a technique, and that is it, a technique. Um, learning and study, and directors in rep, weekly rep, were usually pretty good. So they wouldn't give you a lead, lead oh my god. Mm. Excuse me. <laughs> I have to just check the time. Yeah, okay. Um, they would diversify your part, so you wouldn't play a lead week after week. Uh, that'll almost be cruel. Um, if you've been in rep a long time, some plates come up, hardly any study at all. Why? You might have the leading part, but why? Because you played the part before. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, it, it, to people that have been in rep for a long time, that, that did happen. A friend of mine, yeah, give you an idea um, of how pe people's acting life was. A, a friend of mine, uh, Anthony Linford, his name was, was with Charles Downs at Northampton for about 20 years and moved with Charles Dance to Eastbourne for about another 20 years and he was with uh, the Ch Charles Dance's company for about 40 years, all in, virtually all his acting life. Um, there, uh, there was appeal um, if you really found things stressful, it was called Benzedry. <laughs> and uh, that would help to keep you awake <laughs> to do a bit of study in the night time. Uh, that's a bit unofficial, really. <laughs> uh, there was a famous actor, I was in Diggs in Nottingham, and it was a well known actor. I don't know whether I should mention it. He's not, I think, with us anymore. I'll cut it Evelyn off. Lay, Evelyn Lay, and Frank Lawton. And I had the same room as Frank Lawton, and he left his Ben's a dream in in the room, and so um, I used the pills to, but some people did, and did need to. You didn't do it all the time, but if you were under particular stress. Um, and of course, people did try. Oh yes, they did try. And this was a thing of breath, and I think somebody here mentioned it. There, there were all sorts of little incidents happening in weekly rep. But that's what the audience loved that. Didn't happen in the posh rep, in the, in the, the Birmingham, the Liverpool. Uh, oh yes, and I didn't mention I, I worked at Liverpool, and I worked at Perth as well. Uh, very good reps. But uh, incidents happened in weekly rep, and sometimes somebody tried, and uh, you, you could say, uh, you, what, were you, what was it you were going to say? Oh, I know what you were going to say. You were going to say this, weren't you? And, you know, you, were, you got little techniques of dealing with these things. Um, yeah, and that helped to make it fun. What's the story? Because there was one about when you helped an actor out. Oh, yes. And it was the second time I went to, um, to Buxton, and I mentioned that this couple... Um, and he tried on stage, uh, the, the, the play was called Beside the Seaside, and one thing I haven't mentioned, but we'll do it if you come again, uh, there some time, but in, in, in ref, uh, sometimes we did plays that had been done in London, so we'd have French scripts and the moves were already in the script. Sometimes the director made it his own, sometimes he kept to the, uh, uh, but anyway, um, that's quite an interesting thing. In commercial rep, weekly rep, the entrepreneurs didn't really like that because the royalties were so much higher. 
for the plays that had been on in London. There were rep plays that were just written for rep honeymoon beds, keeping up with the Joneses, loved the luxury, did love the luxury about three times, loved it. Anyway, um, what? what the, oh, but you're helping an actor out. Yes, and this was another, just a rep play, never been in London, by Leslie Sands, who was actually an actor. And it's called Beside the Seaside. And this guy tried, and um, I turned my back more or less uh, to the audience. I was slightly, I was below him and just sort of whispered the line. So I didn't know the audience wouldn't hear. Um, you didn't hear that, did you? No. Um, <laughs> anyway, so that happened. Off stage between the next scenes. You do that again, and you do that to me again, and I'll murder you. <laughs> Another actor would have said, thank you for helping me out. That, the interesting thing is the, the, the attitude. And it, it, he felt safe because his wife was in the company. I, I, if I was running a rep company myself, I don't think I would have a man and a wife um, working together. I think it, I, I've, I've known other instances where yeah. it has made problems. They take over. Can I just ask you about that? Will really, you actually aspired to, you know, did you want to write a uh, play or did you want to... Uh um, direct or, or did you? What were, what were your aspirations in that? Because you seem to be you did lots of things and you it, went to lots of different places. Did you? Yeah. Did you, what did you? Haven't professionally done well, we much. Have to do what we were doing. I, various groups, but on an amateur basis, I have directed. Um, I think you've seen it, uh, probably about fifteen different plays. And, and potted operas and that. But I had, you, you're right, Ross. Um, uh, oh, uh, and uh, Annie Horneman, by the way, um, she was cut off, her money was cut off by her father. Is, is that right? That's right. Mm. Um, no, I must be honest, acting I did. Um, I liked vocal work, I, liked, I did a bit of broadcasting, a bit of children's hour. Um, but um, writing has never really appealed to me. But uh, so I haven't really. But I'm just a jobbing actor, and then I went in for teaching. And when I taught, I didn't do drama because I felt, having been in the professional theatre, I didn't quite have the quite the patience, or the I didn't want to do drama. So I, it was an I was an English teacher. But then I did go and work as a drama lecturer on the course and even then I found parts of the work a bit of a struggle because some people were coming into drama because it was it sounded good you know well I'm on a drama course you know um, and that like acting is tough and some of the things I had to say as a professional Acton. We've got a gentleman here that has just finished at Salford University uh, doing acting. But um, one thing about acting is, A, today, of course, you don't act because it's all media work, which is an extension of your own. So all the business of the th trick, and this is another thing to answer your question. You did, and the West End or the uh, directors would, you know, say this is not good acting. But you did in rep pick up tricks and you tended to use these little tricks over and over again. But, um, as I say, acting today is just an extension of yourself. Just be yourself. So uh, well, so mind you, we talk about rep, soap operas, my word. We're talking about learning lines till two o'clock in the morning. Yes. If you're in a soap, um, it, it is very hard work. And some people come out of soaps because the stress is, is so great. You can be working every day. If, you know, if you're in the storyline, you can be working every day of the week, including Sundays. And you can be, well, sometimes I'm walking past the Corrie Studios um, 
in Manchester, and they're working there at 10 o'clock at night. So there is that, yeah. I think if I had a favourite, and I didn't do very much of it, but it was mainly in Manchester, it, it would be um, a radio. But I never got to do very much, but I did do a bit, and I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed, again, the camaraderie. This is what I love about theatre, being with people. You're a group, the ensemble, and you make friends. It's a wonderful life. Yeah, yeah. Can I just work occasionally? Oh, I could talk to you about resting as well. Uh, and just have a quick word about that, yes. I just wondered, because um, I'm a, a... An actor? Yeah, yeah. You can tell. You can always tell. <laughs> Good or bad. Um, I've been around a while. But um, yeah, you mentioned Charles Vance. I did one of his tours did you? years yep. ago. Yep. He the, the, always had a walking stick. He always he? had a walking yeah, stick and the old, dark hair. The he he was almost actor. of another period, wasn't yeah, he? He was one of the old actor managers. That's right. So, I was just going to ask you, um, it's a generalisation, but in my experience of a rep and generally in the yep. business, have you, i found, uh, I'd be interested to hear from what you think, the more talented the people are, the, the, the better they are, the nicer they tend to be. Did you find that? Couldn't, couldn't possibly agree more. Mm. That was so true. And funnily enough, a little bit earlier on, when I mentioned Buxton and the Cup Hall, I was going to say, and I withdrew, they weren't very good actors. Mm. Um, and they, the Better the act and actors that are brilliant and, and big names in the business are usually so modest um, and so nice and so kind as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I totally agree. The resting business, I think I enjoyed rep because I didn't feel at ease at going for lots of auditions, being re being rejected. Um, and I like I tell students that, you know. You, a, you've got to be yourself, but you've got to learn to live with rejection. And it's very easy to slip into, like in the 50s, now some of you won't know this, but the Actors Pub, the, the Salisbury, Salisbury in, in St Martin's Lane, and you went there on a, on a lunchtime, 90% of the people in there were theatre people. If you'd been on a tour, you went to the Salisbury because you'd learn what was happening, who was casting, what was what was going on. Um, and then they closed in the 50s at three o'clock and you went to either the Kismet Club, um, where dear Susan Shaw used to go, um, and um, go there for another drink, or if you didn't want an alcoholic drink, you went downstairs to the coffee bar at the Arts Theatre. And the idea was, because there was no actor's centre in those days, you were networking. Absolutely. And you were, it was very important, I thought, when you were not working, to keep in touch with other actors. And the source for it was, it was just wonderful. This was the theatre park. It was the theatre pub, I mean, and it was yeah. known as the theatre pub. Uh, I, I once saw um, Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. Absolutely. So did I. Ah, <laughs> we might have been there the same night. <laughs> and I loved that. I loved weekly row. We haven't yeah. got time for anything else. But things happened, of course. Yeah. Like being at the start of a play. I was very nervous. Yeah. There were just two of us. Yeah. I could hear the audience. And the actor who was going to do this scene with me said, I don't think I know this one very well. But <laughs> 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 right at the beginning, on Monday, when you're starting a new show, uh, and if the two of you going on, you, you say to the other actor, we must be mad. We must be mad. One other little thing I did, because he said exactly, I don't know why we do this, we must be mad, it was Ken Dodd, and it was one of the first things he ever did, and it was a little tour, and I was one of, we were called the Back Entry Diddlers, and it was a, a, a cartoon sketch in the Liverpool Evening Echo, and we did little 
sketches where we got into trouble and then we had to do a speciality act. And the leading comedian was a man called Jimmy Charters from Press Statin and right in very tall, small letters at the bottom was Ken Dog. But he was he was a he was a charmer then and he used to come off stage and he said oh, I don't know why we do this. <laughs> and that was, that was in the 50s. That was, uh, like I was only... He's still doing it. And he's still doing it in the same time. You can't get him off, can you? Pardon? You can't, so off, never, you can't get him off stage. No, you can't. You can't. Uh, you, you bring me into just one other little thing. Like you, you can't. And he, like I think he's a genius myself. Um, but the whole nature, and we're all here and we've probably experienced it, is we say that we must be mad, I don't know why we're doing this, but as a ge gentleman there mentioned to me the other day, he said, there's nothing like the adrenaline. This is it. This is it. Yeah. If you're used to acting, although I did change, but really if you're used to acting, you can't do without it. And this is why so many people do go on. Yeah, it is that adrenaline, and if you put in a good performance, and what the government don't realise, I guess this is by the by, but what the government or a lot of people don't understand, if you're a teacher, and you teach a good lesson, and you really feel you've instilled something, you come out of that classroom, you're feeling like, you feel like an actor who's put in a good performance. Yes. Didn't you have a prompt at all? What if somebody dried up and there was nobody to help? Ah, oh, you, oh, you make a very good. <laughs> you make a very good point, and I think Rosie has said this for a particular reason. I don't know whether you know, but in actual fact, the, I mentioned Harry Hampson. He was he was easy, he was pleasant. Forty was very good to his people, and uh, if he, sometimes he wanted to change you from company to company. But Forty was quite a stern man. And do you know how he was unique? You won't believe it. He, he, in most of his companies, I think in some cases the director insisted, but in most of his companies, he refused to have a prompter. Oh. And um, he said, I pay the actors to learn their lines, and I expect them to know their parts. <laughs> um, if you did that, you, as a rep actor and people <laughs> using, getting used to people trying, you did get, you did get round it. You know, I've, I've forgotten what I was going to say. Did you um, improvise? And you improvised, yes, you did. Of course you did. <laughs> you had to. there forever, didn't you? <laughs> <Just like, laughs> in, incidentally, I have to say, um, Rosie here, um, uh, it was indirectly related, I think, to 40. Um, no, no, uh, my, my grandfather worked with, with, with him. one of 40's yeah, companies. Yeah. 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 It's that wonderful Michael Frey play, Noise is Off. Oh, <laughs> what a play. Yeah, 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 that's that's that. Most of you have seen, uh, any of you have seen this? Oh, I yeah. saw it not so very long ago at another. Two, two guys who lived in Southport had a rep in Bolton. And when I was with Creep Shadow Creep, and they had a matinee actually, and we went to the matinee, they were very good. Uh, but then that, uh, that all disappeared. But Bolton, now they've got this theatre, the Octagon, sight lines, you don't have to pick a seat, you can see from, this is the beauty about modern theatres, you can see from everywhere. And I was at Bolton seeing noises off only about six months ago, and it was brilliant. And there's an excellent rep, really first class rep. Do you, do you think we have the calibre of writers uh, in the theatre these days that you have? Or, I know it's a different world, but. Yes, it's interesting. And of course, I talk about uh, with Annie Horneman and Bernard Shaw. And she came from Dublin, she's saying she was the start of the modern theatre, you know, um, the modern movement in theatre here. Um, and of course, in, as I was talking to Peter earlier on, um, in 1956, it all, oh, and I haven't talked about sets, have I? But in 1956, it all changed again. They went from drawing rooms to kitchens, yeah. didn't they? Yeah. Yes. And the modern theatre then, was by the new young writers from the Red Brick Universities, uh, which had a very interesting story to tell. Are, are you disappointed now that so many London 
conveyed are having projection instead of sets. Yes, I, yeah, I, that's right. And we're talking about uh, um, tenants, you, okay. you knew tenants, uh, you work for tenants. Um, Michael White, I think, did a lot yes. of the interior sets. Um, it was mad and like, sets were very tacky and, and pet thing props and things used to be painted onto the sets until a, a lady called Madame Vestris took over the Haymarket um, and she said I want real things and, and she did that making naturalism or realism um, and making sets realistic. Painting. Yes. We had a, a painting shop at Drury Lane. Yes. They did wonderful work. They so did. Realistic. They did. Now it's all projection. Yeah. Does a name it's come? Very that's right. That's I don't know if a name comes to mind with you, Robert Stanton, yes, because he was. You knew yeah, Bob. Yeah. Bless him. I worked with him at Tea House. Yeah. We remained friends. I went to his funeral, yeah, and then it. did you? Yes. And then did you go to the memorial at St Paul's yes. Church? Yes. Ah, oh, and then we all went to the Opera Tavern, didn't we? And that's oh, another right, theatre right, pub, really. Yes. Yeah. And the Round Table. And the round table, yeah. I didn't go to the round table. I just. Can I just uh, maybe just as a sort of final thing? Obviously, thank you. It's not, not at all. Obviously, I've enjoyed it. Could, I don't want you to go. I don't want anybody to go. <laughs> can we? Can we just have your thoughts on the demise of weekly round? Yeah. Yeah. Well, interesting point. Really, people say, "Oh, it's the telly. It's the telly that did it." Um, it was a little bit more than the telly. Um, well, first of all, the big influence on Terry on the telly was um, the coronation, wasn't it? That's when people went out in their millions to buy. Or if they didn't, they went round to their neighbours, and after going to their neighbours and seeing the coronation, they thought, oh, we must have a television. And then when ITV came on, the first sort of programmes they started to put on was cooking and how to improve your house. And the focus changed in society from instead of going out on the home and improving the home, and people just stopped going out as much. And I think that was a demise. But at the same time, if you look at me going, going to Bolton Octagon to see noises off. It was midweek, I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday. The theatre was full. So I still think, you know, there, there is an audience yeah. for something different. And perhaps even more now, when we're all getting a bit tired of the okay. media. Mm. Yes. There is still one little rep, little seaside rep somewhere. Sidmouth. Frinton. Frinton. Yes. Um, and I think there are one or two others. I think Sheringer uh, for so many weeks a year. Although I think Frinton has gone on over the years. I don't know if Frinton Rep has been going for about 45 years. Yeah, and and Win Windsor. And Windsor. Well, just you were really telling me. That's right. Bill Kenwright. Yes. Bill Kenwright. Oh, is he? Bill Kenwright. He's starting to do. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, I think Bill owns the Theatre Royal Windsor. Does he? Yeah. Yeah. Which is great, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Also, the introduction of French theatre changed. It changed. And yes. I know it, that is good because it does bring a lot of people yes, it does. to come into the theatre all over London. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, us at And, so and there, really there are so many, there's things. so much good work done on the fringe. But there is, absolutely. Mm. And you're just yeah, you've got some theatres that are becoming very important. The Park Theatre, for instance. Mm -hmm. Martin will um, know some names. Yeah, but, but, but there's quite a lot, aren't there? Yeah. I'm thinking the Park. And the yeah. Landau. The Landau. Landau, Solid Playhouse. Solid Playhouse, Solid yeah, Playhouse. yeah, there are a lot. Mm. That is developing. Uh, yes. In okay. place of, if you like, the weekly rep and things mm. like that, there, mm. there are kids going out there and making their own work. Yes. You know. Yeah. And, uh, and then, and, yeah. And, and then some people are today. getting into a group from a drama school, last year drama school, saying we're not going to get a job, and they start yeah. their and own company. And they their own work. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Which is good. And that's true of ballet as well. Well, modern dance. I'm thinking of Matthew Ball who went to um, Goldsmiths 
and a group of them um, their started their own company. Yeah. Mm. I taught I taught him English for two years. Oh, thank you. Yeah. But I just want to say on behalf of everyone here, and yeah. thank you. But thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.